Welcome everyone. Good morning once again. My name is Thomas and on behalf of everyone from Esri, thank you for joining us today. It's such a great pleasure to be with you even though we are virtual. Last year's conference, we saw a record attendance of 750 delegates and my team said to me after, five years at Max Atria, we need a larger venue. Well, this year, we did certainly have a change in venue and one that can definitely accommodate a way larger audience. My colleagues and our guest speakers are now broadcasting from different parts of Singapore and even Australia and California. We thank all of you for taking time to join us wherever you may be right now. This virtual conference, although driven by a far less welcoming situation, epitomizes how digital transformation can indeed change the way we live, the way we work and play, especially if there was collective and collaborative focus to make it happen. This week is also Singapore Geospatial Week, a two-week celebration that will showcase the geospatial practices in Singapore, evidence that true spatial thinking is becoming ubiquitous in our organizations, and our country is increasingly becoming a nation of spatial thinkers. Today, we're joined by nearly a thousand delegates and over 180 organizations. Once again, this diversity is evident that geospatial practices and thinking has been adopted across many sectors. The COVID pandemic has fast-tracked digital transformation in many organizations. In fact, today is no longer an option, it is a necessity to make the change. Keeping system agile and scalable to adapt to the ever-changing technology and environment is imperative to our new normal. While geospatial technology have been growing even before the pandemic, we're seeing a significant increase in the uptake of geospatial analysis and information maps, both for informing the public and for internal sense-making since the outbreak started. In fact, one of the first publicly available real-time dashboards dedicated to monitoring the pandemic was the one circulated globally by John Hopkins University. This dashboard summarizes the worldwide spread of COVID-19 and has received over a billion views to date. Closer to home, your counterparts around the region have turned to GIS like the example of our neighboring state of Sabah to support their critical pandemic response activities such as contact tracing, disease surveillance, and overall emergency response management. Cities have made use of this evidence-based analysis to help them decide on how and where to relax restrictions and plan for deployment of limited resources. At home, when a circuit breaker was implemented to stem community transmission, the Urban Redevelopment Authority, the National University of Singapore, and the National Parks Board rolled out public-facing apps that empowered communities to play their part in the fight of COVID-19. URA space out integrates crowd density data from various sources such as retail mall, post offices, supermarkets, so that residents can make informed decisions about where and when to head out while maintaining safe distancing. In the same way, NUS developed a tool that uses Wi-Fi signal strength received from thousands of mobile devices across the campus, allowing the school to estimate the crowd density in different buildings in the campus, allowing them to make decisions about what actions to take to reduce the likelihood of person-to-person -person transmission. Later this morning, you'll hear more from National Parks Board ACEO, Mr. Tan Chong Lee, about the Safe Distance and Parks Initiative. This year, it's unprecedented. And our conference theme of forging a resilient future today has never meant more. Many of you and your counterparts across the world responded to the call to leverage geospatial science and techniques to support the many facets of the pandemic response. It goes to show us one thing. People, you are the key. Without you and your joint experiences and skills, many of such critical responses would have been slower or less ideal. However, the challenges we face today have no regard for priorities or sense of timing. And through the COVID pandemic, you and your organization continue to overcome issues, leveraging on geospatial solutions to create better transportation, better communities, ensuring utilities remain undisrupted, maintaining public order and safety, running your businesses, and taking care of your stakeholders. You and many organizations like NPARCS have extended existing geospatial systems to answer new challenges. Others, like the NUS, have started to adopt geodigitalization of their environment to drive productivity and promote safety. So in light of these observations, forging a resilient future means to me now 
that we must continue to develop our people with the right skills, especially as geospatial becomes even more ubiquitous across multi-disciplines. We need to support them with good technology so that they can respond quickly and accurately to the challenges. And it is only when you combine good people and good technology, you can achieve impactful outcomes. Now this year, a total of seven organizations will be sharing their journey and experiences on how they have leveraged geospatial technology to forge this resilient future. And I hope you'll find their stories as inspiring as we did. I want to take this moment to thank all of our local and overseas presenters for taking your time to share these stories with us. In the morning, you'll hear from Xiaoyong from SLA and Chongli from N Parks about their innovative approaches in driving geospatial innovation and how they have leveraged geospatial technology to adapt the new normal. The S3 team will take you through a series of technological updates from us. On a celebratory note, every year as we select 150 organizations and honor their work with a special achievement in GIS Award. These organizations are selected on the merits on how they have embraced the use of GIS technology to improve the world or have set precedence throughout the GIS community. This year, we would like to celebrate the continuous work of the Singapore Police Force. SPF is receiving the SAG Award in recognition of their enterprise GIS that visualizes data from 800 disparate data sets in an integrated fashion. This capability allows the police to have better situation awareness and to effect quicker and more informed response. Thousands of real-time data is being ingested into the EGI system every minute. The police gets a real-time view of the event as they happen, allowing them to make data-driven decisions to detect and deter crimes. So congratulations once again to SPF for this achievement. I would also like to take this opportunity to announce key partnerships we are taking to affirm our commitment and support the key national initiative and strategic priorities. We're proud to announce that we signed an MOU with the National University of Singapore's School of Design and Environment. This collaboration will drive geospatial enabled innovations in SDE's multidisciplinary initiatives and equip their students with a holistic approach on how environment influences design. This week, we have also concluded an MOU with JTC Corporation to support their vision of integrating digital infrastructure practices and geospatial information across the full life cycles of estates, particularly in the upcoming Pongo Digital District. And finally, I'm also excited to announce that Esri Singapore will be launching a GeoBIM certification course together with our partner BIMAGE in November. The course will drive greater understanding of BIM and GIS capabilities and how this integration is accelerating the AEC digitalization and productivity practices. In addition, as part of a larger effort to help Singapore develop a nation of spatial thinkers, we have launched the Bausted Esri Geospatial Scholarship this year. Our first two scholarship awardees, Jeremiah Liu and Xi Yiting, both of whom have successfully enrolled in the Master of Science in Applied Geographic Information Systems program at NUS. They tell me, their interest in geospatial science is further spurred by its growing pervasiveness in other sectors and how organizations like yours are accelerating the momentum of geospatial growth in Singapore. In closing, I'd like to emphasize that supporting you are our colleagues, our team of experts who remain committed to you and your many missions. Although we're here virtually, please feel free to reach out to myself or my team at any point throughout the day. Our conferences, be it locally, internationally or virtually, aims to deliver the same user conference experience you all came to know and anticipate every year. Please use the networking tools available at your fingertips to interact with us and your fellow delegates. So with that, I hope you'll find our new virtual conference experience an immersive and inspiring one, and I wish you a great day ahead. Well, so to kickstart our morning plenary session, I'd like to introduce Mr. Ng Xiaoyong, Group Director, Geospatial and Data Division, Chief Data Officer at the Singapore Land Authority.